we want to look at regulation of mean arterial pressure. Okay, there's going to be short-term regulation, and then there's long-term regulation. Okay, under short-term regulation, we're looking at our sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, the sympathetic nervous system, it is going to regulate blood pressure by stimulating the adrenal medulla and the adrenal medulla will then secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. It will also tell your postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system to secrete norepinephrine. And that's going to tell the effector organs of the sympathetic nervous system that the um, that you that the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. So norepinephrine is going to tell tells the effector organs I didn't spell it right effector organs the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. Okay, can you tell me the organs of the sympathetic nervous system or tell me the organs that are affected by the sympathetic nervous system? It's going to be cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands. Okay, let's look and see how the parasympathetic nervous system would act. Okay. When the parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated, how is it stimulated? The parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated um, by the vagus nerve, or the organs of the parasympathetic nervous system are stimulated by the vagus nerve. Remember that the vagus nerve is a cranial nerve, and it's the only cranial nerve that travels into the thoracic and abdominal cavities. It's responsible for parasympathetic information it's responsible for parasympathetic information to the cardiac muscle smooth muscle and glands. Okay, when will the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems be stimulated? Okay, let me kind of erase all of this. Okay, we're still talking about short term, the opposite of its long term, but I'm going to leave the words over there. Okay, when will the sympathetic and when will the parasympathetic nervous system be stimulated? Well, what's going to give the information to um, the medulla? Is, will be chemoreceptors and baroreceptors. Chemoreceptors detect chemicals. Chemoreceptors detect chemicals. So these are going to these are going to detect carbon dioxide. Usually, ox, opposite of carbon dioxide would be oxygen. So if you have high carbon dioxide, you have low oxygen and vice versa. Remember that carbon dioxide is going to tell um, how much hydrogen ion is in the blood, which is going to indicate the pH. So in this example, let's say that we have high carbon dioxide. High carbon dioxide means that it needs blood needs to go to the lungs to exchange the carbon dioxide for oxygen. So the medulla, the medulla receives information that the pH is low. Medulla receives the information that the pH is low. It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system this is going to increase the heart rate and increase the blood to the lungs and that's going to decrease carbon dioxide 
decrease the hydrogen ion and increase the pH back to normal. Okay, if we look at baroreceptors, baroreceptors are going to detect stretch. Okay, remember that elastic arteries are going to have stretch, so if you have an increase in blood pressure, you'll have an increase in stretch. So let's say that we have increased blood pressure. The medulla sees that increase in blood pressure or increase in stretch, and it says that the blood pressure is too high for the activity that you're doing. So the medulla is going to stimulate the vagus nerve, which is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's going to cause a decrease in heart rate. If you decrease the heart rate, you're going to decrease the blood pressure eventually because you're decreasing the amount of blood going to the heart, so that decreases the blood pressure. The next video will talk about long-term regulation.